Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back today with the insta with the installation of the Audi RS4 MAF. But before we get into that, I want to show you guys something I've been wanting to show you. It's actually my daily car. So we're going to get right into a little shot and clips of that car. So hopefully you guys like it. I've had it for a while, just haven't had time to take shots with it. Those of you who are new to the channel, and if this is your first video you've seen from me, I would personally go back in time to my other videos to understand what's been done so far on the car and everything. Because I want you guys to get right into it and be like, oh, what the heck's going on here? Math installation? No, just go ahead and go back in time and you'll understand the progress of this vehicle. So, my, the car you're about to see is not my turbo car. The turbo car is right here up on Jack's hands getting worked on. There's the big old uh, ching chong spinny thing, whatever you want to call it. Turbo, right there, yeah. But, we're going to get right into the shots of the, of the daily car. And I'll be right back with the installation of this map. So, until then, just hang tight and I'll be right back. See you guys soon. <laughs> actually, one more thing. I'm heading to uh, make this video. I actually have another surprise for you. You're probably thinking, oh my god, Tyler, two surprises in one day? Yeah, but anyway, I have to go give a part back to my friend. Let me borrow his math for my daily car, which you're going to see after his car. His car is also something very cool, so I'm excited to show you one of my dream cars. So wait till I get to my place of work and you'll see it. I'll be right freaking back. Well, here's the surprise. Uh, this is my buddy's 2006 M6, one of my dream cars. Powered by the legendary S85 V10. Freaking awesome. What are you doing in Tyrone, dude? Oh, we went over to Lincoln Cabin. Oh. But yeah, there it is. <laughs> we'll get some more shots of this car in the future some sound clips and whatnot. But yeah, that's the surprise number two. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever sell that car, to be honest yeah, with you. it's got so much time in it. Okay, now it's time for the, for the uh, my daily car video. So after that, we'll get to the install. Blue citrus. Since I am night, I take my And now I'm going to start disassembling the intercooler piping and removing this factory MAF to install the Audi one. So it's going to be right there. I might revise this whole setup right here. Might try to get this lower. Okay, the MAF is out. It's always a treat getting these off, these couplers. They can be a pain, but they came off, you know. Uh, I'm going to have to get bigger clamps because I was wrong. These ones with lots of thread, they still weren't big enough for the three and a half inch ones they're way too small so I've got some new clamps ordered but here's the three inch to three and a half that's a pretty big boy and the math's going to probably not really fit in here very well now if you're wondering why what this is right here that's for the other control valve but whenever I mounted my foot pressure regulator like I said earlier it didn't work so this is supposed to face the engine and this is supposed to go to the air control valve but I ended up using my factory boot down there uh, because of clearance problems to, to get it up over the fuel lines. Okay, everything, everything's apart. I'm going to revise the fuel lines and all that. I'm going to do all the vacuum changes while I'm in here. Definitely a bigger project than I anticipated. Now, if you use, since the map is so much bigger than the stock one, I am going to put 
the CX Racing intercooler piping the way it was meant to go on, but it hits this heat shield here, covers your brake master cylinder. They're very tight in there, I'm grabbing it, but yeah. Here's my pipe. It's going to be down in there. So, I ordered a 45 degree coupler to bring it up like this. So, it's going to be a straight shot right there. That's coming in the mail. A little update, my elbow came in for my throttle body to the intercooler piping. It was advertised as a 45, but it was indeed a freaking 90, so I just cut it down to a 45 and it worked out great. Needed to be a tight elbow anyway. And I did it to also gain room to put that heat shield back in. So, And another problem was the MAF itself was too high. Let me just set it on here. The plug hit the hood. So I asked my tuner if I can rotate the MAF. But before he could reply, I decided to look up some DIY videos of the cars with this MAF, which would be the RS4 and other Audis. And from factory, factory, it's actually oriented sideways anyway. So that's going to be nice and perfect, just like that. That's pretty much how it is from factory on those Audis. So that's how I want to do it. And that's got to work on getting the angle of that side appropriate to meet up. And then we're going to have to wire in that connector. We're going to have to order the disavalve delete plate from Alexander at Hopwood Motorsports because the disa will no longer fit in there with the intercooler piping. Okay, with a bunch of trial and error, the MAF is in. Using this MAF with the CX Racing Kit was kind of a challenge to get the appropriate clearance since, since the kit is designed for the MAF, the stock MAF size. This is about double lengthwise of the stock MAF. So the 45 down there did end up working to get the angle. I gotta get some hose and run it to the other control valve off that elbow. I'm gonna order that DISA block off plate because it won't fit in there. Uh, I think I mentioned that in the last recording. I'm also going to make a blow off out delete plate for that. Uh, next step for me to do is I'm going to splice in this MAF connector. Uh, thankfully, the numbers are the pins are numbered for me already on this aftermarket connector. So you got one through five. I know number one is not used for these cars, so I'll just cut it and seal it with some silicone. And the other sense, the other wires, I forget the order, but you know, one's 12 volt, one's the MAF, one's the MAF something, one's the ground, and then the other one is, ha has to go to a 5 volt source, so that will be derived from one of the wires in the DME box. Here is the factory MAF connector, which I just cut off. Whenever I cut connectors off, I always try keeping a nice length of wire, in case it ever gets reused or anything, it makes it easier to splice. But here's three wires. Uh, you have, this is your MAF output. This is the 12 volt source or power. I'm not sure what the voltage is as a power. And then your ground. So just three wires. And then for the Audi MAF connector, I actually didn't cut, even though I'm not going to be using number one, I didn't cut it off. I just capped it and sealed it. So there's two layers of heat shrink on the wire. Then they're folded over and then black taped. And then a third piece of heat, bigger heat shrink just to seal it. So that's sealed up nice. And then we're going to go ahead and let's look back at my phone here. See, pin 1's not used. Pin 2 is the volt. Yeah, it's 12 volt. Voltage in is 12 volt for the input. Pin 3 is the ground, which is the black. And then pin 4 is, that's for the uh, 5 volt source, like I mentioned earlier. And then pin 5 is the sensor output, which is the yellow one. So, fairly simple DIY. I'm gonna splice it in. I like to double heat shrink all wires. Then yeah, we'll make a nice little harness. Okay, so I got the three out of the four needed wires spliced in for the RS4 MAF connector. Pin one's not used, as I mentioned before. Pin two was the 12 volt source, which is right there, it's tapered in. Uh, pin three was the ground, which goes to black. Get the light closer so you can see. And then you jump, we just did pin 3, so you jump to pin 5, which is the MAF signal, which is yellow. Then the only last one, the last one to wire up is pin number 4 on this connector. I haven't wired it in yet. This one needs to go to a reliable, constant 5-volt source. 
Now if you look up on forums, the installation of this MAF sensor, you just tap into a wire to the DME box, and I'll show you where that's at here in a second. So let's do that. Let me rotate the light. Okay, so we need a constant reliable 5 volt source. So, in your DME, right there it is, you have 5 connectors. I have them all unplugged. You have to do them in order to get to this one we're getting to here in a second. So you go to the middle plug, which its description is uh, X60003, that's the description for the plug. And you want pin 7. Now pin 7 is a constant 5 volt source for the uh, throttle valve. So, remove the pin, remove the connector from there. And then once you get the connector out, it's really hard to tell because all the wires kind of jumble in there. So, you release these little black tabs on here. Okay, there's a connector. I want to, this is the side view of the connector. So, you get the pick. This little black tab right here. You just will push it down like that, but on the top one. I already released it. Once that tab is released or depressed, you can slide out this part. It only goes in back one way, so don't worry about that. And then we need pin 7 for the constant 5 volt. Then on this connector, they're numbered, so it starts at 1 ends at 13 so you just count over the pins so got one two three four five six is empty next one over seven so that's the constant five volt, five volt we need now on ms43 cars your seven pin wire color is going to be brown and white on my ms42 as you can see it's this green red with yellow spots that's a five volt power wire so we're going to splice into that to our MAF connector. Okay, that wire is tapped. Right there's my little quick splicer. And then my little black wire, which will go to the pin 4 on the MAF connector, is right there. I have it ran through. I'll bring it to the master cylinder. I haven't hooked it up yet because I, I'm, I need to put that heat shield back in. I'm still working down here. I just want to get that out of the way. So this wire is done. It's connected. I will strip it and splice it into the number 4 pin that yellow one because that is going to power a part of the hot film piece in here of the mass sensor and has to be reliable so that's again that's why we use that wire because it's very it's a reliable steady 5 volt uh, people have used this method multiple times it doesn't harm anything as long as your splice is clean nothing to worry about uh, however if you do not want to mess with your DME electronics you know some people don't then you can always install a 5 volt regulator so if you don't know what it is it's going to be called an LM7805 I'll put a picture of it right here it looks complicated sounds complicated unless you know electronics I personally did not know what it was until somebody in my one of my pages told me about it I'm learning stuff you know this, this whole thing's been a learning experience for me so hopefully you guys learn something too so the LM7805 is a little 5 voltage regulator and you'll see on it there's gonna be three pins Okay, the one to the left is going to be a 12 volt source in, middle is going to be the ground, and the right pin is going to be your 5 volt output. So it's going to convert 12 volts to 5 volts. And as long as you tap into a steady 12 volt source, you're going to have a nice consistent 5 volt source out, which is exactly what this thing needs. And what's even cooler is, since this factory MAF harness, this, since this is a 12 volt wire, the red and white stripe, you can mount your 5 volt regulator to the body somewhere because you want that to dissipate heat. So you mount it to some metal. You, you can use the stud right here if you wanted to. I, I have my PR right here. There's, there's going to be a couple of studs down there. You can mount it to the body and then run wires to it. So you can you know branch off a wire from your 12 volt to that left pin. Then use the factory ground even. Splice off that to the middle pin. And then the 5 volt pin is going to be its own wire coming off into your pin 4. So that would be a nice reliable steady 5 volt source. And the reason behind that is so you're not adding extra stress to the DME wire. Although the person I double verified with said that there's very little draw from this MAF. It doesn't need much uh, voltage. You know, it's only a 5 volt source. But it's not about the voltage. It's about the draw rate. I know it's, I forget what the ac actual spec is. But I know it's very little. And he says it doesn't really draw that much at all. So that's, that's why this method is used more often than not. And he had, he's personally had this method for over a year now, and it's no problems. 
So it's not like you're actually sapping that much power, just tapping in for a 5 volt source for that hot film piece in there. But if, like I said, another good way to do it is to tap in a 5 volt converter regulator, and that will solve that issue. So that was pretty much the install of this Audi RS4 MAF. Uh, so once I get this wire spliced in, once all that stuff down there is done, I will you know, nicely wrap up this in something black so it'll be nice, like a nice factory harness and I'll plug it in to the side of the map down there and that'll be done. Hey there again guys, uh, that was the video of the MAF installation. It wasn't too bad, right? Uh, yeah, I hope you guys thought my little daily wagon was pretty cool. Uh, freaking E46 Touring got for 1800 bucks. I know it's not the best looking thing, but I just wanted to make a cool video out of it. It didn't, like, the intro was great, and then you see that, like, oh, all that hype for this car. I mean, it is what it is. It's another project of mine. If I have it long enough, it'll be mint. So, yeah, that car has a couple mods. It has, you know, the side-up exhaust. Has also, also has a tune for Mike Dodge, uh, CCV Delete, all that stuff. Which I do not want to get into detail the CCV Delete, because there's so many pro experiments I've tried. That's just a detail for another video. I don't feel like explaining the whole setup I have. I went through multiple different catch can setups. Anyway, that was, that's for the future. So yeah, the dad wagon will live on. I'll keep on working on that. Whenever the turbo car is caught up and done, which is going to be probably until, not until I'm about 35 years old. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that map video. Some good information on there. i never seen that documented on YouTube, so that's pretty cool. I'm getting, I'm getting lots of love from you guys. Lots of recognition, which is awesome. You guys actually motivate me to, to uh, keep working on my car to show you. There's days where I get down the dumps and don't feel like working on it. You know, everybody has those days, but I, I have a lot of those days. So you guys keep me going. Uh, your positive comments. You guys always, always want to see more. That keeps me working on it. There's things I've not talked about. Like I have to obviously reinforce the floor in the rear for the subframe. I have something cool that I also got from Mike Dodge for that car. I actually bought his old subframe. So that's that's gonna be that's down the road, wide on the road. Also gonna be getting a clutch from the UK from Hopwood Motorsports. It's a twin disc, direct bolt in. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Lots of cool things to be looking out for, guys. I'm sorry if I ramble too much or whatever, but you know, just enjoy talking. Cause nobody like nobody else really listens to me talk about this car and stuff. So I guess you guys get an earful every time I upload a video. Nothing wrong with that, right? But all right, I'll quit talking there. And just watch out for my videos, I guess. And I'll see you guys later.